Hello, where we uh, challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. Well, it's Saturday and it's that time of the week we're doing thumbs up or thumbs down, as we every Saturday. So, Peter, uh, what are your thumbs ups and thumbs downs this week? Okay, let, let me go to thumbs down first. The thumbs down is the U.S. presidential election because of the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, in the final stretch of this campaign, there is no longer any glimmer of hope that policy will be discussed by either candidate or either party. Okay, so it's you know it's a uh, hatred of Trump. Um, it's going to be how you how you fall down, uh, what side you fall on the pandemic. And uh, as you and I have said many, many times, uh, maybe uh, Russiagate will make a resurgence at the last second. You know, you mm -hmm. never know. Um, and, but but for, for me, is this this vacancy in the, in the Supreme Court it has, has galvanized a small, seriously, small group of people on both sides, seriously, and raised a lot of money. And so they're going to fill the airwaves uh, about how it's right or wrong to fill the seat. Um, um, I, common sense dictates the president has this prerogative. He can fire the FBI director. He can do all these things. He can determine um, immigration policy. You know, but you know we have half the country ha his hair on fire for anything he does. And so I think this does a huge disservice uh, to the campaign. Um, we have no idea what Joe Biden stands for, and and and. Uh, and, and Donald Trump has not uh, laid out a, a vision for his second term. He's been asked many times. Right. He hasn't come up to, uh, for it. Okay, so, I mean, with this uh, passing, and I, I, I want our viewers to understand, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was not one of my heroes. But, you know, I put this message on, on Facebook, you know, with Scalia saying, you know, I, uh, um, uh, I like them in, e uh, in equal measure. Yeah, because they were amazing individuals. I agreed more with one and less with the other, obviously. But, you know, it, that, that post on Facebook just, it, it really, it saddens me so much is that you have to, you have to get in line. You have right. to get in line. <laughs> Don't think freely. Don't right. think yeah. nuanced, okay? It's yeah. really, really yeah. awful. So the problem with the attitude towards these justices is that it's entirely determined by outcomes. They, you know, they like Ginsburg or they like Scalia entirely according to the issues, how they're going to vote on the issues, which is not really what you're supposed to look for in a judge. I mean, a judge is supposed to interpret the law and he's supposed to use uh, excellent jurisprudential arguments uh, in favor of one interpretation or another. Not according to, well, I like uh, Ginsburg's politics. And Ginsburg had made no secret of her politics, which is quite unusual for a Supreme Court justice. I mean, the, the things she was saying about Trump in 2016 were quite shocking. Uh, she got a pass on that. She shouldn't have, but she got a pass on that. Uh, and so, uh, so much of the attitude towards Ginsburg, this whole canonization of Ginsburg, lying in state, which, no, which has never happened before, uh, except William Howard Taft, but he was a former president. So, uh, so the lying in state, only because people liked her politics. They liked the way she ruled uh, in cases. And that's really, really not what you're supposed to be looking for uh, in the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was, it, it, we, it's, it's kind of a sad uh, thing to say that we have to remind people it was how to interpret the Constitution in laws, okay? It wasn't your politics, okay? But that's another institution that we've seen so much degradation. Uh, we just, and I think it's probably the last great institution that's been degraded. And I don't see a, a whole way, uh, a way back here. Let me give you uh, my winner here. Okay. Joe Biden is a winner this week. Um, uh, Trump, uh, uh, Trump's decision to come out with this $200 um, uh, pharma rescue uh, package for, for uh, primarily for el the elderly, um, um, it looks like a cheap political trick. And that's exactly what it is. Um, the legality of it is quite dubious. Um, uh, the, you know, the executive branch doesn't have um, uh, the, the control of the purse strings. That's Congress that has to allocate the money. I don't see Nancy doing that. So I, I, I just thought it was, you know, after three and a half years waiting for a health care plan and we get this kind of, you know, afterthought. OK, I, I just thought it was just very badly handled and 
Who is advising him on these things? And 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 it looks it looks to be pandering. All right. Now, if you want to pander, George, then go full, you know, full, you know, full Monty. Okay, go full Monty if you're gonna pander. Right. Okay. You know, where's right. the rescue package for the middle class during all this economic turndown? I'm all for that. Okay. But this, you know, this this is this a, a footnote to his, his uh, presidency to date. So I, that's. Right. Joe, Joe Biden ends up being a real winner because he can at least talk about something that is tangible, and that's Obamacare, and because it does exist. The Republicans failed to repeal and replace it, which they said they were going to do for, what, almost eight years. And they had two years to do it, and they didn't do it, okay? So um, it's kind of, kind of going full circle here with my loser and winner. My thumbs up and my thumbs down is that um, um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg gives everyone reason not to talk about what really matters in this campaign. And so we, what, what, what 40 some, some odd days out? Okay, so... Uh, let's wait for the October surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a couple of um, winners this week. You know, both of them quite quite humorous. So I'll do the first one, um, which is quite a short. Um, the um, Metropolitan Transit Authority in New York uh, has just um, ruled that it is prohibited to uh, defecate on um, the subways and the buses. And, uh, and that's obviously a positive development. And the New York Post uh, uh, ran appropriately uh, the story under the heading that uh, henceforth um, the only number twos allowed on the MTA is, is the number two train. Um, <laughs> so that's an extreme positive and a very good development. You know? <laughs> um, and then the, the other... Uh, Thumbs up is actually the uh, Department of Education. Um, the president of Princeton University had written a very, very long letter to the Princeton community um, urging everyone to address uh, systemic racism. Um, and uh, as the whole country should address it. And he said, in particular, Princeton should address it because Princeton still practices systemic racism, but we've got to do everything we can in order to eliminate uh, systemic racism in Princeton. Upon which the Department of Education uh, wrote a letter to him and said, well, you know, um, under the Civil Rights Act of 1964, um, the federal government cannot give you money um, if you're practicing racism. Now, since you've been president, you have received $75 million from the federal government. So we're really very concerned about the systemic racism that you're practicing at Princeton. We need more information from you. Could you provide us with information as to how you have been practicing this systemic racism? Because otherwise, you know, you might have to give us give back this uh, federal money. It's supposed to where, you know, smart kids are supposed to go. You know, right. you know these, these Ivy League schools, they don't have a problem with systemic racism because that is a myth in America today. Um, but they do have a problem with nepotism, okay? Okay, little Jimmy, you know, I, I, my, my, myself and my wife went to Princeton, and little Jimmy, he's a little slow, but, you know, you'll, you'll see the get him through, right? You know, because he's got to make those connections and he's got to get on Wall Street, okay? He's not too bright, though, okay? But, you know, we'll endow you, you know, everything will be fine. You know, this is what happens. You know, you, you get all these mediocre people uh, in places of power, and, and they, they, they truly believe that they have the right to bestow their power to their next generation, okay? This is what has happened, and, and, and merit has been the biggest casualty of all this. I actually have another real quick loser, mm -hmm. thumbs down. That Italian parliamentarian that was sucking on a woman's breast during a uh, Zoom. <laughs> I guess it was the whole parliament was on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it shows, you know, either she was very attractive or it was really boring or he's just a slob. It's probably right. number three. <laughs> yeah. I got a, a, a smaller thumbs down and a bigger thumbs down. The smallest thumbs down is um, Scientific American, which has always been the most uh, distinguished uh, journal of uh, our generation. Exactly. For science, you know, if you really wanted to know what's going on in scientific research in America, you read Scientific American. Um, it's for the first time in its history, it's now written an editorial yep. uh, 
urging want to vote for Biden. And essentially wrote this long, tedious uh, spiel about how Trump is anti-science, whereas Biden is pro-science. And of course, you know, it, it was, you know, cliche after cliche after cliche, you know, Trump's response to COVID, not respecting the science and the data. And of course, none of it had anything to do with science. It was really read like a handout from in the Biden campaign or from Nancy Pelosi's office, um, because the science is pretty much divided on COVID. Do masks work? Don't masks work? Uh, uh, is it a good idea to uh, close down everything? Is that the way to treat uh, COVID? Or should we have herd immunity? Scientists are debating on that. You can't just simply say, scientists are agreed that this is well, this is the science. There, I'm, no, I'm sure that this, the science is clear, you know, is that, you know, social distancing is required. Masks are required. Oh, but if you want to protest with Black Lives Matter, well, exactly. science gives that a pass, okay? You can put science on pause. Did you know that, George? You can put science on pause, okay? Exactly. But that's the science. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the virus takes a vacation uh, during the, <laughs> to the Black, Black Lives Matter riots. Then it comes back when that's over, yes. Um, so, yeah, so that's a, that's a uh, thumbs down. And a bigger thumbs down, I think, is the, the coverage of the media of this FBI agent uh, who basically uh, spilled the beans on what's been what was going on in the FBI and then in the Mueller investigation, which is everything is pretty much what we had expected. This was a political operation. These people had nothing uh, on Trump. They had no evidence at all for the Ru Trump Russia collusion. They were entirely driven by uh, politics, and this FBI agent uh, is being treated as a pariah in the media and not as he should be a whistleblower. Uh, which was, yeah, this was clearly waste, fraud, and abuse within government. And that's what he's pointed out. And instead, the media uh, are attacking him. Yeah, well, they'll probably go through his uh, web browser now and find something, and, you know, he'll be done. Okay. <laughs> they'll, they'll cancel him. Okay. <laughs> well, we really do live in a world that is run by fools, absolutely run by fools. Cancel that subscription to Scientific American that breaks my heart. Oh, my goodness. You were supposed, that was a magazine for smart people when I was growing up. Right, okay. exactly. Exactly. You know, at, at, at high school, you know, you, you know, if you were smart and your parents were rich, you took out a subscription uh, to Scientific and American. And you never threw a copy of it away, ever. It was against the law. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And for them to, to wade in. Uh, into the presidential campaign, and particularly with these cliches. I mean, if they had at least had a, had a, uh, a decent enough argument, but just to simply regurgitate uh, Democratic Party talking points, uh, it's, it's pathetic. Well, I guess we can end on this, Judge George. It's only going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> that, that definitely so. And another thumbs down, I think, is just a very briefly, is this uh, talk among conservatives, particularly the Laura Ingram types, which suggests that any attempt to oppose Amy uh, Coney Barrett is driven by anti-Catholic bigotry. Identity politics is terrible when it's practiced by the left. It's equally terrible when it's practiced by the right. Yeah, so address the argument. And, and, and that is such a huge both. disappointment to see how the right is mimicking this identitarian uh, uh, political agenda. It's disgusting. And you know what? It goes nowhere. It is a loser, a losing proposition. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Peter, that was, uh, that was the week that was. We'll be back next Saturday. And remember, if you like the gaggle, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.